volcano here. So this ring of hills goes right round the crater around here. And a bit of a loop up around the left here. So this volcano here is called Echo Crater. Now prior to the eruption in 1886, it was when it erupted, it blew everything out. And with the erosion around the edges here leveling the land off, it's now what they call an inverted volcano. Instead of going up, it does the reverse, it comes down into the ground. It is still an active volcano. It erupted again in 1917 where the water is down here in the bottom. But three years after that eruption, it was just six dry craters, no water at all. It wasn't until 1920, hot water started coming up through four of the six craters. 1923, it got to this level here. These days, overflowing out on the right-hand side, and that stream flows all the way down to the crater lake they're headed for at the bottom there. Going up the valley. Oh, yeah. Just on the right is the two tall trees behind the mist there. That was where we started, right back up there. Now, down in the water in front of us here, on the front right, you see all that bubbling in the water down here. Now, it's not hot water coming up, but gas is escaping. In the thermal valleys, it is mainly two gases. The first one is CO2 carbon dioxide, same one that's in soft drinks, fizzy drinks, beer. The second main gas is H2S, hydrogen sulfide. That's the one that's responsible for that um, lovely aroma around Rotorua and the Thelma. There's less algae in the way you won't uh, damage the footwear, but do you want to see how warm the stream is? Let's say point here. <laughs> the stream has an average temperature of around 50 degrees Celsius. During the summer months with solar heating, it'll rise up to 55 degrees. In the winter months, the reverse, it'll drop down to about 45 degrees. Right. The stream's about as warm as it gets during the summer months here. What's the perspective? The meters of the best recorded height was half a kilometer high, just shy of half a kilometer. Now, usually from the east side, the geyser is destroying itself. It's tearing itself apart from the east side. Mid-1904, it started with over one day and a half through about a week, and then a fortnight of half. By the end of the year, it had almost died out naturally. In December of 1904, this area had a huge storm. Lots of mud, silt, rain and debris came flooding down through the valley and plugged what was left of the geyser. We're standing on top of a plug on the world's largest geyser. And if you feel the ground on your feet, literally just down here. <laughs> literally fractured the entire hill apart. If you look over on the far wall, you see those big crack marks at various points running all the way through. It fractured the entire hillside apart at that time here. Now the water that you see in the bottom here, over a six week period, that will rise in four stages. It will overflow in this stream on the front left here for anywhere from 12 hours through to 96 hours and then it will drop back down. The water is on its way up at the moment. You see that distinctive ring? That's the high mark for the water. When it drops down, it will normally drop down about 8 or 9 metres below that point there. The cavern here is around 30 metres deep, it'll drop about a third of the way down. Now the steam that comes in here 30 metres down, that is around 270 degrees Celsius, or closer to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. And the water...